Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, and um, I tend to discuss lots of different, or give my opinion on lots of different things. Um, thank you for subscribing, thank you for liking, thank you for sharing. Now today is a different video because um, it's based on an experience I just had maybe about three hours ago, maybe a bit longer. But I do believe that, you know, we learn from our experiences and we can teach others from our experiences. So that's why I'm sharing this with you. Um, I was driving in London and I was going along one of these lanes. Um, it's got enough for two cars, but if you've got an obstruction, you're going to have to pull over. So as I'm driving up this lane, there's a car, well, it's actually a van that was parked halfway on the road and halfway on the street. So I pulled up behind it because there was an oncoming van. So to give the oncoming van room to go by. As I do that, I heard boof in the back of my car. And I was, for that moment, I was in a state of shock. I, I've never had an accident before. And I was really quite shaken. Anyway, I got out of the car and then it was all like I was an automatic pilot. And I noticed as I was writing down the man's name and his um, telephone number, my hands were shaking. And I thought to myself, this, I, I remember thinking, this doesn't look good. It looks as though you're out of control. But I couldn't help it. I was just so shaken. Anyway, I then proceeded to take, um, once I got his name and his, he gave me his email address and telephone number, I took photographs of my car, the damage to my car, which the whole of the back bumper is split and cracked and falling off. He had minimal damage. He was driving a BMW 1 Series and it was just his number plate. Anyway, there was a lady who came out of the car and she said, oh, we can, um, do you want to settle this outside the insurance? And I looked at her and I said, no, I've heard too many nightmare stories. I'm not going to do that. So anyway, um, I took her name and her number. And um, she went and spoke to a lady, a little old lady who was in the back of the car and told her what happened. It must have been her mother or something. Anyway, my point is, is that um, when it all happened and I got out, I just felt as though there was something that I should be doing, but I didn't know what it was. I called my old man and he, he didn't pick up. And I thought, you know, I called my brother. He didn't pick up. And I said to him, you know what? I'm going to call the police because I'm really not sure whether this is enough. You know, I've forgotten since I haven't had an accident. And, you know, I forget that times move on. You know, back in the day, you had to take insurance details and stuff like that. Now, it appears that just from the car registration, they can they have the insurance details. So you don't even have to ask for them anymore. You just need the registration and the person's name. Anyway, um, so I exchanged all the, that information and he called the police because when I said I was going to call the police, he said they're going to take about three hours to come. So he called the police and told them what happened, which made me feel a bit better because he was accepting liability. I know if they hit you in your back that it, they are automatically liable, but you never know these days what somebody can say. So um, we got a claim number and the, he handed me the, his telephone and I spoke to the police officer and he told me exactly what I should do, which is what I had done. And he gave me the claim reference. He asked me for my email address and gave me the claim reference. Um, from that point, I just decided, well, I might as well just continue to my mum, which wasn't five minutes away. But I didn't realise how emotionally stressed or traumatic it was. I'm not quite sure whether it was because it was... You know, I just hadn't expected it. I'm, I'm not quite sure what it was, but I got to my mum and I burst into tears. And then my mum saying, oh, I fell over this morning. Oh, we're all having accidents today. And I'm like, that's not what I want to hear right now. 
Then I called somebody else and they're telling me about the accident that they had and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, nobody's asking me, how are you? Are you okay? Can you drive? What does, you know, how are you feeling? And you don't realise at that point how important emotional support is. So I felt that that was lacking at that moment. Anyway, I decided I'm going to call the insurance company and make sure I lodge um, the claim. I thought I'm fully comprehensive. It should be very quick. Just give them my name, give them my car registration, my postcode, and I'll give them the car registration of the person who hit me and his name and his contact details. Boof. That's what I thought. But oh, no, that is much too simple. Two and a half hours later, I was still on that phone. They're asking me all manner of questions. And the funny thing is, well, not the funny thing is, they were asking questions, they inject questions every now and then about what was that, what you'd written on the application form. I don't know why I related to it, but it was like, even though I was kind of semi out of it or on automatic pilot, I was quite aware that they were um, not trying to trick me because if you're authentic, if, you, if you're if you bona fide, you've got nothing to be worried about. But they asked me things that were totally unrelated to what had just happened to me. And I thought to myself, oh, they're trying to catch me out. You know, where are you going? Where are you coming from? Those kind of things. And um, they asked me a question. I can't remember what it was. I thought, oh, that's a strange one to ask. Um, then they asked me if, um, oh, I can't remember all the questions. There were so many questions. Anyway, I was on there for about an hour and a half. They said, oh, well, um, thank you for answering all those questions. I now have to put you through to the company who's going to deal with the claim, who's going to give you the higher vehicle and who's going to do the repairs on your vehicle. I had to go through the whole thing again. Another hour and a half because then they wanted to put me onto the legal they said oh are you feeling any pain have you got any aches or whatever I'm like how would I know I've just had the accident how do I know how I'm going to feel in the morning oh well we'll give you the um, accident claim personal injury number and then they can call you I'm like I don't really need that right now I just want to report my car and get it sorted anyway this other these other people um, that were um, supposed to be doing my car, the questions is unbelievable. And then they sent me, they said, we need you to sign a contract, sign it as soon as you get it. There's lots of pages, make sure you submit every single one of them so we can go ahead, we can do it for you by Tuesday. And everything seemed to be a bit rushed. And I'm like, why are they rushing me? Why has everything happened to, got to happen so quickly? You know, it kind of made me a bit wary. Anyway, I started asking questions, you know, me and my critical, you know, my sceptical mind. So I started asking questions and I took, I didn't go to the document where they were telling me I needed to submit because once you start submitting, it means that you're actually acknowledging certain aspects of that contract. So I didn't do that. I just went by the cover letter where I had concerns. I wrote to them and asked them to relay those concerns and, you know, help me to understand it a bit better. And they did. No, no, they didn't at, back, at that point. Um, at that point, it was just a question of, look, you're going to have to pay £60. For, you've got £95 access, £60 for the engineer to come out and all of that. And I'm like, if I'm paying for um, a courtesy car and I'm paying for excess, comprehensive, why the hell do I have to pay all these other charges? But apparently it's only if you're, if they find out that your claim is fraudulent, then you have to pay everything. You have to pay for the damage to the car. You have to pay um, the engineer's visit. It'll cost you an arm and a leg. So if you've made a fraudulent claim, that is. Yeah, so that was that. So anyway, um, I called my daughter and um, the first thing she said is, Mum, are you OK? Are you feeling OK? Do you want me to come over? And at one point I was thinking, you're two hours away. I don't want to inconvenience you. But in another part, I was thinking, I don't know if I can drive home right now. Because at that point, I felt so un uneasy. But she said, I'm going to come. And 
you know, that's what I needed. I need, you know, sometimes when these things happen, it's not the big things that matter. It's the little small things like that. So she came over, to, she, took a, she doesn't drive, she took a two-hour bus journey and came and the first thing she did was give me a hug and I felt so much better. And it's what I needed. And she followed me. She came in the car with me and we went home and I felt so much more comfortable. So I think another thing is, apart from, you know, getting all the information, the logistics of the process, it's also having that emotional support. It's really important because it helps you. It helps kind of stabilize you and puts you back on an even keel. So, yeah, once I got home, I clarified all of the things that I wasn't sure of. They let me know that the only I'd only be responsible if the case was fraudulent, if I found that my claim was fraudulent. I didn't have to worry about the £60 engineer fee. I didn't have to worry about the hiring fee for the car and all that stuff. So I decided after I heard that to have a glass of cognac. And I am now going to put my feet up and relax. But I thought I'd share that with you because, you know, when you do have an accident, you are on automatic pilot. So do remember to take photographs not only of your car, not only of the, um, the other driver's car, but also the surrounding areas. Anything that, you know, like for me, it was that van that was half on the road. I should have taken a photograph of that. I didn't. But it didn't matter so much in this particular claim, but it might in the future. So make sure you take all the photographs you can and report to your um, insurance straight away. Get a police claim form and then get a hug at the end of it. That's all.